Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing the Mizuno 225 Mizuno Pro Iron. Probably the most anticipated, I think, of the Mizuno Pro release. The HMBs last year, I think you liked them a lot in yep. fittings. We got tons of good feedback about them. I saw lots of them in the bags at uh, different courses I played. The one complaint with, with them was probably they would be nice if they were a little bit more compact. Mm -hmm. They definitely answered that. Without a doubt. We, we kind of spoke about it in the overview video that this, this is the Mizuno for the masses, this yeah, version. Right? it is. Because it screams Mizuno. It has the shapes and lines and flow of a Mizuno head, um, but it is designed for the masses. The loft progression, the forgiveness, the multi-material with the tungsten, you know, lying deep inside the head, um, you know, in the bag from five yards. Yes. Good luck telling it apart from the, two, the 221, Absolutely. other than the satin versus chrome finish. So many people want to play a Mizuno iron, but for the most part, it's not that they don't have a forgiving iron. They never really had an iron that would compete with like a P790. Yeah. To me, this is, you know, I think if you want that type of performance, Apex Pro is a really good looking iron as well in this category, but I don't think I've seen anything that does it quite this nicely. Srixon ZX4, uh, mm -hmm. I think they have a, a good nice. look to them yep. as well. But this is about as simple and clean as it gets, and it really isn't a very big iron considering it's hollow. Absolutely, I, I love what they've done with it, Matty. It's mm. uh, it's only a fraction, a half a, a degree um, weaker than a uh, six iron in the P790. Okay, so we're so in the same neighborhood. So there's not really uh, much of a, a loft loft kind of gain in, in TaylorMade. So I think when you get down to the feel, firstly, and then the looks of this, and you compare it to some of the other heads. I mean, it's going to put Mizuno mm. in a really competitive space. If you can have some objection to the way a, a hollow body feels from other companies, whether it's jumpy or clicky, you know, yes. those two, are, two <clears throat> things are, are held against that design, you, this is where you want to go. Yeah, and that initial test where you hit a few seven irons with it, I mean, from listening to it back here, it could have been just about any forged iron that I've heard. Very, very soft. Yeah. And you said you didn't really detect any clickiness at all. No, no, you didn't. Yeah. You, just, you just felt it nice and, nice and hot. Yeah, that's what people are looking for. So the more detailed review this time, we hit the seven iron last time. This time we're going pitching wedge seven, and we will hit the four iron, yep. which is kind of the same loft as the three iron from the blade set. Mm -hmm. So we should see what, I mean, what you're getting with a four iron of this set versus the most traditional club we've Absolutely. probably tested. That one felt good. good swing, yeah. Really nice sound to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely a bit of a different flight than we saw from the blade pitching wedge. Not so much in the launch though. The launch is actually quite similar. Mm -hmm. It's not launching much higher than the blade did. It's spinning probably about, let's say, 900 to 1,000 less. A bit less, yeah. And it's got a bit more speed on it. That's exactly what you'd expect, but just a very easy, what's your normalize there? 40. Yeah, so this is barely downhill, this whole. Yeah. A very easy way to hit a 140-yard pitching wedge for That's you. a five-mile-an-hour jump for me on, on standard uh, pitching wedge ball speed. Right. Uh, normally I'm 102, 103, so 107 uh, is, is a bit quicker. So again, relying on the tech. It's doing quite a lot then, isn't yeah. it? Sounded great as well. Really nice. Very nice. It's, it's good. It's just really, nothing to argue with. I on don't those, have anything there? negative to say yeah, at all. There isn't one. Yeah, great strike there. I mean, is it is it the you know half a percent difference between each shot that the blades were? No, but for a hollow club, yeah. you've got three pitching wedges that look awfully tight in most ways. A little bit on the height on one of them that was your very best versus one that maybe was a little bit thin. Right. But three results that are within a footstep of each other. The deviation numbers are, are still quite low, aren't they? Very tight. I yeah. mean, that backspin deviation is tight. I mean, look at the, the side angle carry and, and total deviation. It's quite amazing. Nothing. Yeah, they they literally are the same. Yeah, that's great to see. That was a great sounding strike there. Probably hit that as good as I can. <laughs> I think I might have. Yeah, you need, you needed more space in the green. Yeah. Wow. What was your normalized on that? 91. Yeah, so it is fairly flat, this hole. So 92 is what it registered. This is exactly what we saw in our uh, initial test. Uh -huh. High 120s ball speed. That's probably the highest one I've seen you yep. do, though. Yep. High efficiency for what a 7-iron is. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely less spin than you would see with a traditional club, but I think for the most part, you do so many fits with this type of player. Most people are coming in overspinning the mid-iron anyway. Absolutely. So yeah. a reduction in 1,000 RPMs of spin, and that's with the TP5X. Absolutely, You yep. can get that spin back up like we mentioned. Definitely, but yep. Get a little Pro V1X in there or some of the other golf balls. <laughs> like, you know, we, we keep going back Wilson. to this Wilson golf. It's stuck in our minds, isn't it? It really is. Because uh, it's, it's a, a good, good ball. ball. This looks a lot like a P790 screen capture to me. Doesn't it? It's just a lot like what we see when you hit a P790 in here. It's like, yeah, Definitely. this is just what it's doing. Definitely. A lot more distance, lower spin, high ball speed. And that flight is 110 feet in the air, 47 and a half degree landing angle. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. That ball's not going anywhere. 17 yards longer than I would carry my own seven iron. It's a great swing there. Very neutral. Mm -hmm. Slight I mean, fade even, which is... <laughs> we've, oh. we've moved that back a little bit. Yeah, just so you get... And you flew it right on one, yeah, 187 there. That's really nice. So obviously you'd expect your other one that turned over to the left slightly. Yeah. Had a bit more speed, but that's, I mean, that's no slouch at 127 either. No, no. Sound is great, isn't it? It, it really does. Such a great sound. Yeah, especially, as you said, you're not using um, the softest ball right now. No, that's no. a TP5X. Yeah. It's just really solid sounding, isn't it? Pretty similar to the last one. That's going to skip on for sure. Yes, sir. If that's how you averaged out, let's say, in your 7-iron fit, yeah. that's quite amazing. You're right. It's 14 yards longer than what you play now. And you hit it actually higher than the pitching wedge did. So those averaged 111 feet, 47.9 degree mm -hmm. landing angle. And people will look at this and go, OK, is that a six iron number. Sure, those are great six iron numbers, aren't they? For lots of people, yeah, yeah. that's, I mean, that's, that is a great, you know, great six iron numbers. And again, you know, CG location is, is why we're spinning that little ball, uh, is why we're spinning that a little bit lower. But um, it's like you said well. earlier on, you know, for someone who's maybe a little bit of the kind of, you know, chop slicer, who's kind of having to retain dynamic loft in order not to pull it. Yeah. I, I, you know, you want that, you want that Definitely. lower spin rate to allow for you to, Deliver it the way you do. Totally. Yeah, yeah. that's really nice. Okay, let's go for the, uh, the forearm. That sounded roasted. Yeah, that was nice and solid. Look at that. Wow. No problem getting there. Nope. So what's your normalize there on the machine? 220. Okay. So more ball speed, you kind of mentioned that in that video, you thought you might see some 140s. Mm -hmm. You've definitely seen a 140 right away. Yeah. Efficiency is like driver territory. Yeah. Three wood territory. This is interesting down here though. That's not, you know, that's not low spin. Bit thin, Matty. Yeah, it's, it's a touch thin. But really coming off with speed though, isn't it? That'll be the main difference. You thin that blade three iron it's not getting to the green by any any mention no zero not even close. we talked about that didn't we off yeah. camera a little bit like you do not want to hit a blade slightly no. then goes nowhere yeah so you flew it the same distance there you had almost as much ball speed you dropped a bit of spin but i mean functionally they were not that far off in flight from what was really a perfect wow. strike to a thin strike wow <laughs> that's nuts they flew the same exact trajectory just one was a bit left of the other mm. Coming in nice. Just didn't quite cut enough for me. I had the shape. I can't though. believe that's that's had all that carry that's on. That's crazy. It. So yeah, good. Yeah, your path is out to in there the way you'd want it to be. Kept the face. It almost carried, you know, within three or four yards mm -hmm. of your your draw. So a little bit different shape on that one, but again, the same flight window, almost identical. And one of the things that people really hold against these types of irons, um, when they're even when they're trying to look as sharp as what these do. When you get to a four iron, a five iron, you go, well, I can see the back of it. The sole is so yes. wide, I can, I can see the, the back kind of uh, edge of that iron. You cannot see this one in the four iron it's at all. It's a big plus. So, you know, all you do see is, is just, you know, the nice, nice kind of compact uh, top line and face. You don't see that back at all. And that's what most people will stop at is probably that four. So the two and the three, you can definitely start to see the back of it. Yes. But... It's important to say most people will stop at the four, and yep. that's a good feature because most of these clubs, you're right, you can see a bit of the back, and it's not, it's a little bit off putting. Um, they've done what they set out to do, which is to make it look like a player's iron, mm -hmm. but perform 
I mean, I'm just going to, the reason we keep saying P790, it's a compliment to them because they make huge compliment. They've made the best one for years. Um, I think that's what they were chasing with this. And honestly, these numbers look remarkably similar to when we test yeah. the new P790 or even the previous model. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. We, <laughs> I, I, I had a flash in my head there of, of some of the, some of the other YouTube videos out there that some of the taglines that will go along with this. Yeah. This will, this will come with the tagline of, you know, best irons I've oh, ever tested sure. or... Which is know, what I saw a lot of the time when P790 came out was yeah, those type of yeah. taglines. Th this will come with those taglines because it does have that level of performance with the feel, the, the look, the reputation, you know, all yeah. those things that what Mizuno bring to the table. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's kind of like what you said with the blades initially. It's kind of hard to find one negative thing to say about it. I'm I don't sure. have anything. I don't know what you would pick apart, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, pe people will probably say you and I probably err too much in the, the side of positivity yeah. at times. Fine, but I, I, can't, I can't offer you anything when it comes no. to these. I don't have a single thing to say to you. I agree. As to, you know, I, and, I, and I did have, with the last HMB, I did have the, I wish yeah. it was 20% 20, 20 smaller. Exactly. I can't say that, but this, this is perfectly proportioned. The offset, the top line, the head size overall, the feel, the distance, performance, whatever it is they're, they're, you, you want to discuss, I, I'm, I'm right happy there. with all of it. We said it in the initial video briefly, mm -hmm. but I think if you look at these numbers and go, mm, I'm not really a high spin player, I, I don't know if I could play these, I think it would be worth demoing them at a place that would bend them a bit weak for you. Yeah. Because I think you were saying you might consider playing an iron like this mm -hmm. at some point because they're just they're so good now. If you would probably bend yours a degree and a half weak, you get a bit more spin, maybe play a higher spin ball. This could cover you know an even wider market. Yeah. Somebody who's you know a, a single digit handicap or even a scratch player like you, you might look at these. Definitely, definitely. I think there will be some some scratch players. I know there was there was for this type of iron there was some love on the Champions Tour uh, oh, for yeah. this type of iron. Makes sense. Um, so. Uh, this this will only continue to grow in its popularity. Well, guys, I think you can tell this will probably actually. I don't know what I'm going to title this yet, but it may be. <laughs> I may have to apologize in advance. This may be that type of best iron ever video. But honestly, they are one of the best we've ever seen in in many many different ways. It's a great point. I don't know if I've been more impressed with an iron. Um, yeah, uh, these are about as good as we've ever seen. Definitely. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.